will never have that feeling. <laughs> the found 20, it means nothing to him. Nothing. A 20 is more annoying to Bill Gates than a nickel is to us. Exponentially more annoying. <laughs> and how annoying is a nickel to us? It is, I hate them. I hate them because they're quarter impersonators. <laughs> Humor in everyday things is a calling card for comedian Gary Goleman. A slam dunk, really. Appropriate, since he says he grew up dreaming of playing for the Boston Celtics. His fallback, comedy. Making for a unique childhood journey that he chronicles in his new book, Misfit, Growing Up Awkward in the 80s. The look back is a look into the humor that's produced comedy specials and countless late night talk show appearances, bringing audiences laughs and connection. You know what, no matter how nice a hotel is, the curtains never close all the way. They can... With his observational humor, comedian Gary Goleman has been making audiences laugh for almost three decades. That's how we tried to take on Christmas, by having eight days of Hanukkah. But then the Christian people couldn't even let us have that. They were like, oh really, eight days of Hanukkah? Screw you, 12 days of Christmas. Even finding humor in his lifelong battle with depression. And when I'm depressed, I look at a sunset and I think, yeah, you gave up too. <laughs> Turning the bleakest times into a hit HBO comedy special, 2019's The Great Depression. More times than not, I would eat ice cream with a fork, which is like an unofficial symptom of depression. It was tough for a long time to share that with people, but then, when I recovered and felt not just better, but was thriving and felt hopeful for the first time in almost three years, I thought I'm obligated to the universe to share this. I think the best way to picture my childhood was think of Charlie Brown had Snoopy died. The special also took fans back to Goldman's childhood, growing up outside Boston, a journey he fully details in his memoir, Misfit. Why did you want to write the book? Money. No. It's a great reason. <laughs> it's a really good reason. <laughs> no, I always wanted to write a book. Goldman's irrepressible humor is woven through the story of his school age years, chronicled in chapters K through 12. I was very precocious when I was a little kid. I, I think he would have loved me. <laughs> the youngest of three boys with divorced parents, Goldman says comedy was a salve for traumatic times, the language within his family. Do you remember the first real laugh that you got? It's in the book in first grade, Mrs. Burns. One day she said, what is a chick? And this little girl who was the smartest girl in the class, uh, Lorianne McLaughlin, she raised her hand. She said, it is a baby chicken. And Mrs. Burns said, that is good, Lorianne, very good. And I said, or a girl. <laughs> and, and everybody laughed. Right. And, and I thought, I will spend the rest of my life chasing this high. Comedy became his calling, with Goldman finding those everyday moments from life provide the best material. One of my favorite things ever was noticing in about third grade that most of the states start with the same first two letters. And then, <laughs> you need say no more because right? I know this act and I love this. They assembled a ragtag outfit of rogues, misfits, and ne'er-do-wells. <laughs> How often do well? Ne'er. They ne'er, they ne'er did well. And they were charged with abbreviating all 50 states down to two letters. Now, when I first started doing comedy, I thought, this will be my joke. In 1994, I put it into my notebook. And then finally, in around 2014, um, I, got it, I got it all together and to work. They said, <laughs> Alabama, AL. Holy crap, this is easy. Goldman released the state sketch to the world as part of his 2016 stand-up special, It's About Time. So what's next? Arizona, AI, there we go, we're back on track. Next, Arkansas. <laughs> it went viral after a performance on Conan. Just, it, it grew into a, a thing where I was walking down the street just a week ago, and a man on the corner yelled out, Ned do well! <laughs> Ned do well! And I was like, uh, my gosh, that, that, was, that was quite a moment. Goldman calls comedy his first love, although basketball is a close second. Still playing six days a week. It always felt like 
when I was on a basketball court, this is where I'm supposed to be. It's the same way I get when I'm on, on stage. I'm like, oh, this is where I'm most comfortable. I was automatic <laughs> from the free throw line because free throw shooting is a direct function of childhood loneliness. <laughs> I would just shoot for hours and do dribbling drills. My mother's room was the only uh, part of the house that had tile, so I would dribble in her room. and It gave me a, a purpose and an outlet ideal. And also, and I said this in my last special, if somebody slaps you on the wrist, they stop the game. And, th and that made me very happy. And make was, everybody stand yeah, yeah. around. Stop the game, separate everyone, <laughs> and let you make two easy shots while everyone else is forced to watch quietly. <laughs> As if to say, Think about what you did. Yeah, oh, it's my what gosh. it is. <laughs> Dane, I can't tell you how much this means to me that you're quoting me in an interview because with me. Because it's so funny. I mean, Thank you. Goldman's stand-up has inspired more than just laughs with his willingness to bear all in the Great Depression. Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, as it's always called now. It has a very bad branding problem. Including Even the ECT shock. he underwent. Even electroshock to electroconvulsive is at best a lateral move. People's image of it is always going to be Jack Nicholson in one flew over right. the cuckoo's nest moment. But then I asked my That's manager and the director and they said, do you think people will be horrified? And they said, well, you can just try it. And if you can't make it funny, then you take it out. It's not done like that anymore. It's not. They give you a general anesthesia and a muscle relaxer and it's it's four years since that came out, and there's not a day that goes by where somebody doesn't say that it, it helped them or their family. I mean, when you find out that what, that these jokes are, are providing some solace and also some information, yeah. it's, it's more than I could hope for. In terms of his own recovery, Goldman says his wife, Sade, was the most valuable player. We weren't even married. We'd only been together for six months when I fell apart, and she basically became a caregiver. If you ever wanted to give a spouse a test of whether they will stand by you, make them watch you fall apart. <laughs> he says the marriage, like the book, was meant to be. As for what's next... I'm a vision board guy, so I made a lot of vision boards over the years. What's on the vision board now? Yeah, the vision board is, is mostly about maintaining this incredible life that I've somehow walked into and secured. I'm very grateful. The book is out on Wednesday. He's also launching a comedy tour with it. And the best part, he talked about this because we saw him working on his act. It's inspired by the book. So it's not like just retelling jokes that are in. You're not going to read the book and say, oh, I heard that in the act. It's things that you may have learned in the book, and then there's more. It's, yeah. I'm really fascinated to see how people that have read it will take to it. It's the, vis the vision board is maintaining what I have, just not screwing anything <laughs> up again. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>